Praise God. You may be seated. Actually, you could stay standing. I have to stay standing. No, just kidding. <laughs> we should do it the opposite. We ought to try that as pastors. Let everyone stay up and we'll have a nice lazy boy recliner. <laughs> My son is a, a location pastor at a church in Maine and New Hampshire, a multi-site venue. And man, when I go to his church in Scarborough, Maine, they have those reclining, they, they lease a movie theater. And it's the reclining, you can't even set up. They, they just like kick back instantly. Man, I, it's one of these times I'd like to hear him preach. <coughs> yeah. Some of you will get that later, but the rest of us. It is so good to be with you today. I'm, I'm uh, thankful to God. My wife and I are separated right now. But uh, we'll be back together this evening. Amen. We're, we, uh, you, those of you that like to gossip, how many know a lot of Christians love to gossip? <laughs> yeah, we had a guest speaker today. I don't know what happened, man. He said he and his wife are separated. He left her. She's home. She attends church occasionally. Come on. <laughs> We've been doing this for 38 years now. We married at 18 and... After we fully adjusted to marriage, we went to Bible college a month later. So uh, we've had a, it's been a great life. And I, I love my wife then, but I adore her now. We're, I don't know anybody that's closer. We're just so close. We've had a lot of challenges, but uh, her kids are mine too. So I okayed it. <laughs> I okayed it because, uh, uh, our daughter, our oldest daughter and son-in-law, he's in the Navy, they're stationed in San Diego, and uh, they're, they're, he's getting out in March, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I offered to write him a note now and send a post-it note back to his captain. Uh, we'd like to just keep him here. Chaz isn't feeling well, we're gonna keep him here in Maine, but anyway, uh, we haven't had our family together, all together for over 10 years for Thanksgiving. Everybody's scattered. Our, our other uh, daughter, our youngest daughter and her husband are youth pastors in, in Las Vegas. There's a couple of people still saved there. and God's <laughs> doing some good things. And uh, by the way, while I was there, I visited too the International Family Church of Las Vegas. Uh, you just had uh, the pastor, one of the pastors speak here. That was a great service. It was so good I stayed for both morning services. I felt guilty taking up a seat, but man, I just had to, uh, I had to stay there. But anyway, they're home for a few days, and I gave them the okay to breathe as a family. I'm doing a 24-hour turnaround, come and preach last night and today, and then heading home tonight. Just appreciate my family. I was thinking about that song we sang about getting the gospel out to generations. And it was so cool. Uh, we had Thanksgiving on Thursday. And because we're going to be apart again, we had Christmas on Friday. And we, we, I don't know what they've got scheduled. We may be doing 4th of July tonight. I don't know. <laughs> Secretary's Day tomorrow morning. I have no idea. But uh, we celebrated and I said, and I'd resurrected an old press back rocking chair that was my great grandmother's and my little uh, granddaughter, my youngest granddaughter sitting in that chair, she's five. And then my grandson was in it earlier. I took pictures of him. It had been apart for years. My uncle in his eighties gave it to me. I got it put back together. And, and I'm just thinking about the generation over in another rocking chair was setting my son in my mom's old rocking chair. Before you think we're hoarders or pack rats, no, we got a couple of things left that wouldn't be worth five bucks at a yard sale, but you won't sell them. I, I, they mean so much to you, you know? I kneel and pray in that rocking chair every morning. I, I couldn't this morning, it was too far to ride home, but you know, you don't wanna make it a religious emblem, but I'll often sit there in the middle of the night or whenever I'll, and I have a burden, I'll just pray, I'll say, God, you heard my grandmother in this chair. You heard my mother in this chair. I don't mean the little one. I mean the other one, you know, from my other grandmother. I appreciate the heritage that, that I had in my family. I, uh, my dad left when I was 
uh, five years old and married another woman with five kids, and that made it challenging. He was a, uh, a, a addicted to alcohol and a very rough individual, and later in life, uh, he learned about the higher power, and he got help through AA, and, and then a few years after that, I let him know who the higher power was. And I introduced him to Jesus. And uh, man, by the end of it, he would try to bring up his past. He's like 80 years old. He's with Jesus. Nobody, son, I'm so sorry for how I was. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I left your mother and your sister. I, was, I said, dad, I have no idea. He looked at me weird. I said, no, that's all under the blood. You accepted Jesus. Our past is gone. That doesn't matter. We're fine. All this, tell your neighbor, all this is just dress rehearsal for eternity anyway. So you messed up, you get up again. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Come on, you keep going. And God kept us. God brought us through and, and uh, called me into the ministry back at 18. I've been preaching ever since. We're between churches right now for two years straight. We're not sure what God has in mind, but we're just trying to go with the cloud, the pillar of fire and the cloud. You know what I'm saying? Follow his direction and preached anywhere from Vegas to northern Maine, Maryland, uh, Tulsa area, and a little everywhere in between the last couple years. So I'm just grateful to be here this morning. The services have been awesome, man. I love this worship. I love it. All I did was mention a chorus last night, the Wick. I don't know if any of you have that House Fires 2 CD that has good, good father on it, and the wick. And I just mentioned it last night. I walk in and they're doing it this morning. I, aren't you glad for your worship team? It was so refreshing. And I, I, I quit commercial with them. I sat there, I pastored a while. I've had a couple of worship people. You know what I'm saying? And, and some of them are all jacked up on themselves now. I didn't get that vibe from any of them. Everybody's just happy to serve in their role and worship God and invite us to come along. So let's just thank God for the worship team this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I got to do the book commercial again because I could get beat if I walk in with some of those books when I get home. No, just kidding. I'll go preach and I'll forget to take the books out. It's awesome. My wife will say, what did you do? Well, you know, we did those for a reason. The small one is called Acorn Dropped. It's an allegory of how we're like an acorn on a tree. And Father Tree says it's going to be amazing. You got all this potential. I made, it, made you. I've got great plans. And we don't realize at that point that you really got to fall in the dirt and die to yourself and everything. And then he resurrects you. And it's amazing. But that little book has helped literally hundreds of people all over the country. I'm grateful for how God has used that. I wrote that about seven years ago. And then the next one, Acorn Chronicles, that's simply chronicles while you're going through. It's just writings from the acorns view of what life is like on any given day. And the last one with the rocking chair on the front, that's just the, uh, that's a 21 day devotional that I just finished. Uh, we just had that published about a a month ago. So if you'd like those, see Pastor Faith, and that will help me. I'll get better fuel economy. Uh, I won't be lugging those back to Maine in my pickup truck. And so God bless you. I, I believe, I hate to mention my own books, but I really believe they'll help you. In fact, I'll give you this guarantee. I've never done this, but if they don't help you, if you buy one, it doesn't help you, ship it back to me, I promise. Here I am in the pulpit saying it. I'll refund your money. If it does nothing, you don't like it, I'll refund your money and sell them to Pastor Nick. It'll be all right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he loves the clearance stuff. He's just like me. We're going to Zechariah 9, verse 12. And uh, my family would like to be here today because when I would go to multi-services in my church, they loved it because I couldn't go too long because another group was coming in. I know your pastors don't have any trouble with that here. And it was just great to see Pastor Glenn today and to see Pastor Faith, Pastor Nick this weekend and all of you, so many of you. Some of you are my Facebook friends. How many of you are friends of mine on Facebook? Where are we? Amen. Good to see you guys. Thanks for putting up with my, my serious devotionals in the morning. And then later I'll put something on 
that will at least let you know that I'm crazy. I'll put on like, share this cat for no reason. You know, I just love having fun. If you want all serious spiritual, go on, uh, go on my ministry acorn page, or you can go on our website, which is pastoralrobbins.com. That's only been out for about a month and uh, talks about our desire to bring people encouragement and hope and inspire them. I don't know what happened. Try it. Pastor Al Robbins, or no, alrobbins.com, alrobbins.com. And a woodworking company came up the other day when I tried to tag somebody in that. So I'm not doing flooring. I hate doing flooring. Uh, but give it a try anyway. We're in Zechariah 9, verse 12. Thankful that God helped me to lose 18 pounds this fall. Now pray for me because I've literally gained 22 of it back. Anybody else struggle like that? There's food every three feet. I don't know what it is. It's everywhere. I'm at breakfast this morning at uh, 6.20. It wasn't officially open until 7.00. And uh, I had, uh, I had, I've never eaten this in my life. I had, I've eaten it, but not as breakfast. I had uh, two halves of an apricot. Boy, that's a real man breakfast. And uh, cottage cheese. You know, the waiter said, what else can I get you, ma'am? Anyway, it was, uh, he thought I was a model anyway on the catwalk. But anyway, uh, I had like a, a light eater's breakfast, but then I, I had a bagel with cream cheese, and there went like two weeks worth of calories, but, but I did good. Man, they brought the hot stuff out. Oh, at seven, and I, oh, I bacon and eggs and all that. I, I believe whoever came up with the fact that you could eat all that stuff, he's, getting, he's going ahead of all preachers and missionaries in heaven to get an award. This is Earl. He discovered bacon. Uh, <laughs> I love it, but I stayed away from it today, knowing I had to preach. But I may go back there and beg them to get some of that out after church. Anybody struggle with things like, you know, you lose 20, you gain 30? and uh, Most of the time, I have uh, three different sizes of pants in my closet. Now, don't leave me out here to hang here alone. Come on. You got it. Oh, that was my shirt I used to wear. Come on. I asked my wife once, does this shirt make me look fat? She said, no, it's not the shirt. Anyway, uh, no, she didn't. She's nice, but I'm just trying to loosen you up. Some of you have not seen me before. You're wondering if anything can come out of Maine, any good thing come out of <laughs> Nazareth or Maine. But I'm, gl I'm having a good time anyway. I'm glad to be here. Father, we thank you for your word today. Open our minds, hearts, and spirits. We just believe, God. I believe I'm a man sent on a mission, God. I didn't ask for this assignment, but through Pastor Glenn and this team, you have dropped it in my lap, and that is to bring hope to this congregation today. Lord, there's so many people here. They're laughing. They're happy. They're worshiping you. They've chosen. They made a big choice. They could have stayed home. Some of them felt like pulling the covers over their head and saying, forget it. What's the use? They're hurting. They're struggling with medical issues and financial issues. They, they can't even pay their bills. Some are hurting, God. They're, they're facing a, a, a bad diagnoses from their doctor, and they have marital challenges and trouble with their kids and parents. Some of these dear folks here today, members of your body, are my brothers and sisters. And, and, and God, they sit here, they buried a loved one this week or this year. God, they're struggling. They're reeling from it, God. And I've, I've been through all this stuff, God, and you've given me hope. And I know you want hope conveyed this morning, and I trust you and give you all the glory in these next few minutes. We're going to leave here differently, infused with hope in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. And Zechariah 9, 12, I got to get down to business here. I love this verse. It says, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare unto you, I will render double unto thee. I want to receive that. By the way, I didn't write that. God wrote that. So I can grab that verse and I can hold on to it. Now I can be down here with what I'm going through and all my challenges. I told my doctor the other day, I've been to the doctor more this year and had more tests and procedures and things cut off and stitches and, you know, treadmill tests and they... 
they like, it's like you hit 50 and they start checking everything. You know, well, I'm not, I can't bench 400 anymore, you know, sorry, you know, I can't run 50 miles, you know, I never ran that far anyway. I've run seven, but I can't even do seven. I can maybe get to the third row here if I had to, and if somebody pointed a gun at me, you know, no, I'm not suggesting it, put that away. Anyway, uh, but it's tough, man, challenges, things, I never had heart issues, now they want to put me on a heart monitor tomorrow. Go ahead, put me on. I'm going to pass, man. Remember that old cartoon character? Put him up, put him up, you know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. I'm going to keep going. But if I focus down on what we've been through, the uncertainty, I'm just going to level with you. Uh, we used to give away 30 to 40 grand a year personally, my wife and I. Last year, we made 10 grand. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we've lived in brand new custom homes and God spoke to us, sell those, sow some money back into the ministry, into the Dream Center in LA and Teen Challenge and Mission. I'm not saying look at me. I'm saying this is, this is how we should live, whatever God wants. And, and move into a single wide trailer and back in a custom home. And you're driving a $500 car. I went to preach in D.C. about seven years ago. Pulled into my friends, Dave Owens. And he lives on Embassy Row, big classy church like you guys. I pull in with a $500 Acura. The right marker light fell out and I'm duct taping that in before I go to church. Come on, have you been there? And I've also, I've also had in the last few years, somebody hand me the keys to a $50,000 loaded Chevy Duramax diesel four door, eight foot bed. You had to register it in three states. It was parked in three states at once. It was huge. And so we're in a season right now. I'm okay. Nothing's late. There's been no steady income for two years. I'm only sharing this. I'm being transparent. If my wife's watching this online, she said, don't tell this stuff. She's letting me tell it. It's all right. It's a tough season, but I'm okay. I'm living in my mom's old 69 single wide with a 16 by 20 edition. And we're redoing flooring and vinyl siding and windows. In fact, I got a map of Yugoslavia on my backside from where I fell off a ladder and landed on the concrete last week. Nothing broke, thank you, Jesus. There are benefits to weight gain, come on. <laughs> if you're gonna fall someday, get another helping of potatoes, come on. <laughs> so I can focus on that. Almost lost my wife since she was here last. She had a simple gallbladder surgery. They had to do three more procedures. They almost lost her. We knew it. My sister in Texas was praying. I said, we almost lost her, she said. I knew it. She said, God woke me up in the night and interceded. And she's doing okay, still got some struggles, but she's healthier than I am, man. I wouldn't fight her. Come on, I, I wouldn't fight her. You better not either. Come on. Listen, I can focus on that or I can turn to the stronghold as a prisoner of hope. I'm infused with hope. He's a good, good father. He's always good. And I'm loved by him. I really am. He loves me. <coughs> I think sometimes he even likes me. I think God laughs at us. Not what up. But laugh and say, oh yeah, go for it, man. Go preach it. Sing it. Oh yeah. He saw some of you worshiping. God knows what you're going through today. But turn to the stronghold, O oh, prisoner of hope. Because don't let that downtime and season and issue keep you there. Turn to him. Refuse not to praise him and insist on lifting him and singing and doing the best you can. I see you made a choice to come to church today. So did I. I see we made a choice no matter what. Maybe we'll have to walk with a limp like Jacob did for the rest of his life. But God visited him and God brought him through. My hope does not depend on my age. I'm too young for some things. Come on. Our hope is not dependent on what the doctor thinks. I have fun with them anyway. I mess with them, man. My doctor's cool. He's got the same sense of humor. I, I, was, I had a biopsy on a stomach thing here, you know, skin thing. You get them. Just cut the whole skin off. I'll be fine. Tighten the rest up and I'll look 20 years younger. <laughs> Does that biopsy, takes it out and comes back, schedules me to get stitches out. Stitches out? There's another seven grand right there. Come on. 
I'll take them out. So I took them out like the day before. I think there was three stitches. I took them out and then he'd give me extra bandage. You know those clear band-aids where the middle is clear? I put that over the wound and then on top of the clear, I put the three stitches and then I put a regular band-aid over that. I know, I'm crazy. 15, 20 people just left. Anyway, listen. I went into the office. I'm laying on the table, shirts off, and nurse is here. He's there. Peels it off. First Band-Aid has stitches on it. Somehow they think they've passed through the clear plastic barrier, and they're gone from his skin. Doctor, they're looking at each other. Doctor, did you do the stitches wrong? What? I couldn't let him hang there. He looked at me. He knows me. He says, come on, Al. He said, you did this. I said, I can't say because then it would negate the money you're going to make from this appointment. (laughs) Have fun with it anyway. Come on, guys. No matter what it is, God's going to take care of it. I told him, you don't even need to tell me. When When God calls me home, I'm going home. When he says, stay, I'm staying. He can heal me. He can change me. He can give me the strength and renew it according to Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Even the young men shall fail, but they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. He's going to give us strength, and that's enough hope right there to get through the day. It doesn't matter how low things look. You you may not even feel like hope. Quick survey. How many of you ever, you know, you're trying to hope, but you don't even feel like hope? Instead of putting on praise and worship, you put on like Neil Young. Old man, look at my life. I am a lot like you were. 24 and I'm too much more. Anyway, no. You put on, tell the truth. I want want transparency today. I'm trying to hurry. But you, you know you need to press in and and run to the stronghold, run to God, and instead you're messing with discouragement. You're not putting on Hillsong. You're not putting on, I don't want to hear good, good father. (laughs) Give me that, what is it, Billy Joel sad song or something. I'm trying to think of song. Have you, come on, tell the truth. Somebody comes to encourage you. Leave me alone, I just want to be alone. Why? So you can wallow in it. Stop wallowing down in that. Turn to the stronghold, prisoners of hope. If awards were being given out by heaven today, he would hand each of you a trophy because you got up when the devil said, stay down, you're discouraged, you're hurt, you're broke. It's never gonna change. You'll always be a loser. He's just gonna divorce you again. This marriage was a mistake from the beginning. Your kid is a mess, he'll never come off drugs. And the devil hands out that negativity and maybe some of your family and friends and guess what happened? You said, no way, I'm coming to the stronghold. I'm a prisoner of hope. I will worship, I lift him because we're in a house of answered prayer. Come on, I'm not staying home. I'm not gonna stay home. Have you ever stayed home from church because you didn't feel like going? Yeah, I'm I'm like the the boy that was hiding under the bed on a Sunday morning saying, I don't wanna go to church, I don't wanna go, I just don't wanna go. And his mother said, honey, you gotta go. And he said, I'm not going, I don't wanna go today. It's, it's Sunday, you've got to go. He said, I'm not going, mom. She says, you have to go, you're the pastor. <laughs> you had no idea that Pastor Glenn's mother told me that story. Guess what, though? I leave this afternoon. He gets to tell stories on me after. (laughs) Your current situation is only a season. It's temporary. And your hope is not dependent on circumstances. I see. Can we just salute real quick? Do a salute. I'm not good at it. I'm not a veteran. But can we just say, sir, yes, sir. You fought through it. You got bills higher than the new girders out here. <laughs> By the way, don't review your stack of bills at night because you can't sleep when you do that. <laughs> My wife and I will tease each other sometimes. We're, one of us is trying to go to sleep earlier, and we do it totally in jest, but she'll say, honey, don't forget that truck payment's due tomorrow. Don't tell me that. 
Come on. We, we're crazy. We love it. We have fun. We have fun, man. Don't go over those things at night. Don't Google your symptoms. <laughs> you know, you get a splinter. I've been doing vinyl siding and replacing windows on our... On our I said, don't call it a trailer. It's a mobile home. Anyway... <laughs> It's a tough season, but we're having a ball. By the way, it looks like a cabin now. A steel roof. The addition blends in. We've got one floor. We're going to do the rest of them all. Uh, a nice hearth with, with stonework. It looks like a cabin. We call it the compound. If you see me post on Facebook, I'll, I'll put the compound, Berwick, Maine. It's on an acre and a half. River frontage. Deer come in the yard. All. It's awesome, man. And uh, cat, cats come in the yard, too. I won't tell you what happens here. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> No, I love animals. We have a dog. and So we're like a lodge, Uncle Al's lodge. But you go through these seasons. You go through these tough situations. And you're working and, and uh, you're, you're looking at a splinter. And then you Google it. Everyone's gone to bed, but now you're awake like an hour. And if you wake up like one hour into it, you're saying, well, can I get about seven more? And you, you Google it and you, you go up and say, splinter, redness. Biopsy, <laughs> terminal, punch all those in. It could be anything. You never know what it is. About 25 years ago, I had to leave my office one morning in the first church I pastored. And she's gone to be with Jesus now, so I can share this. But our secretary, working in the next room, I said, I, I, I'll call her Lois. It wasn't Lois because I love her, good woman, but she was raised in a real negative setting. And I said, Lois, I'm going to go take a nap. My head's killing me. I got a bad headache. She said, Do you think it's a tumor? <laughs> I wanted to say, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's not a tumor. <laughs> that was her first thing. Some people live like that. Oh, your husband was 15 minutes late. Do you think he's having an affair? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's actually bringing me flowers. A friend just called, saw him in the gift line. Thinking the worst, believing the worst, focusing down there instead of running to the stronghold as a prisoner of hope. I'm a prisoner of hope. I'm going through some stuff right now. I'm not whining. I'm, oh, please pray for me if I can bear. I'm doing great. I don't, I'm doing as good right now as when I had a loaded house and Harleys and all this stuff. I, 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 I'm doing just as good. In fact, I got a lot less taxes that I pay now. It's, I love it, man. We said, look, we're not going to get another house. We got this little trailer. It used to be my mom's. We fixed it up. We're having a ball, man. I think I'll have another big house someday. But I don't want to pay for the entire city budget. <laughs> it's only like two-horse town that we live in in Berwick. Come on. Listen, hope isn't dependent on circumstances. And we got to get our eyes off what it is because it isn't as bad as it looks. And even if it was, he's going to get us through. Either we trust him or we don't. Either we trust that our God has closed the door on some things and they can't get to us. We're very secure. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. And I refuse to look at what I'm facing and I am choosing on a daily basis, moment by moment, when I start to feel this dry up and, oh, what are we going to do? God just takes care of it. In the name of Jesus. Faith and hope are the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you've got a stack of hundreds in your pocket, what do you need to hope for? Well, I've got to pay a truck payment. Well, you can buy the truck outright if you want. That's not hope. Hope is brightest when it's dark, like a flashlight. You can, you can turn a flashlight on right now. No one's going to be impressed. Wait and show your new Christmas flashlight tonight at about midnight. Show your friends when you light it up and burst your field into flames from the candle power. Romans 8, 4 says, I'm saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. 
Don't judge the scene you walked in on. Don't let your friends and enemies judge the scene you're going through right now. It's a scene. It's not the movie. It's a snapshot. It's a chapter. If you read one of my books, every chapter is different. Don't judge the book on one chapter because I I don't want to refund your money. You know what I'm saying? Come on. (laughs) If you read all three, ten times a piece, I'll refund your money. Come on. Romans 15, 13 says he wants us to always abound in hope. I want to be like Abraham in Romans 4, 18 that says, who against all hope believed in hope. Some of you are against all hope today, but you came, you put your praise on, you put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You lifted him. You said, I'll exalt thee, I'll exalt thee, I'll exalt thee. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. You're a good, that's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. And the devil runs out of your worship area, plugging his ears. Come on. I'm not saying you don't hurt, that you're not struggling, but we can't ascribe to the lies of hope. You're not alone. There's a stronghold that you can run to, Zechariah 9, 12. Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Proverbs 18, 10 says, the name of the Lord is like a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and are glad. (laughs) Aren't you glad for our tower today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 61, 3, I got to hurry. Thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help. He's not like Nick from me now. Oh, help, Nick. Help, Pastor. He's right there, man. He's right there. If anything came in, anybody burst in, tried to hurt one of your pastors, Pastor Nick, you guys, this whole thing would be covered. We don't need security. The whole group would lash out and take care of him. He's right there. He's right with you, man. He's not out there. uh, Give him a call. Text me. That's not our God. He's an ever-present help. He's right there. You're You're in the waiting room at the doctor's. And you're wondering. He says, I gotta see you. And you're like this. And, and your spouse is saying, what's the matter? And you say, oh, nothing. What do you mean I'm nervous? <laughs> Who's in the same seat with you? He's like half on. Hallelujah. Come on, it's going to be okay. I'm a good, good father. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. That child that you're praying for is going to be saved. It's going to be all right. My oldest daughter miscarried this year. And it was tough because they deliberately planned it for when my son-in-law was deployed for six months. They wanted to be, have that baby when he got back. And, and uh, God called the baby home. It didn't work. But <laughs> she's not focusing on that. It was tough. It's still tough at times. You don't ever get over things like that. There's still a hole losing a loved one. My parents, my brother-in-law was killed. My sister-in-law was killed years apart. It'll never, it's never. I miss my mom on Thanksgiving and my dad. I like to just hug him and you'll never get fully over it, but you can choose hope. I know every day that they've been gone is one day nearer to me being with them forever. Thank you, Jesus. I refuse to say, man, I miss him. It's been 36 years. No, wait a minute. You are 36 years closer to never being separated again, even for a second. It'll be forever. You're just going to step in. There he is. It's going to be like you weren't missing from each other. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to listen to the negative. He's just like his father. He's just like his mother. Don't tell me that. God interrupted this little boy's life at age five when my pastor's wife came and visited and invited us to church. And I accepted Christ. Can kids get saved that young? Yeah. I I felt conviction. I got saved. I used to go to the altar almost every time. I loved it. I wasn't, I just felt the move of God back then. I knew his presence. I saw it in my Pentecostal grandmother and my mother and I just appreciate what God did he interrupted my life so I never did many of the things that my dad did 
I never did them, not even once because of what God did to interrupt generations. And that song we sang about, we're bringing him to the generations. Your kids right now, it might look desperate, but turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Bring your kids in prayer. Have you seen War Room? Man, what a movie. When it comes out, I'm buying it. It's a great reminder. Keep praying, keep praying, keep believing. Don't set looking at the mess. Bring it to him in the name of Jesus. Trust him in the name of Jesus. The woman at the well in John 4. Man, she, uh, she was kind of a mess. Jesus ministered to her. And before you know it, the whole town came out. I love that passage because I'm, I'm an on-the-street soul winner guy. I love it. I love it, man. I, I love sharing my faith. I'm at a, a convenience store was about to open, and I pulled in. It was, it was like a day early, and we're a small town, you know. It's not New York City, not quite. There's maybe 6,000 in our town, so they knew me. I've been there for years. Hey, Pastor Al's here. They let me in. All the vendors are setting up. I just said, hey, hey, Mike, let me just pray for you guys. He and his wife, Linda, they've run that store, convenience store for years. they got a brand new building. It's twice as big as it was. I said, you guys are the greatest thing in town. I built them up. Then I said, can I pray for your business? And, and when, I, when I stopped praying, I look up, they're both crying. And when I came in at the opening to get my coffee and all that stuff, uh, man, it was powerful. He said, yeah, I told my mom, he's like 50 some years old, and he's reporting me to his mother for Pastor Al prayed for us and pray, and, and put hands on us and prayed that God would help our business. And they're crying again. And I'm saying, yes, Jesus, because when we're going through tough times, we need to become the last thing is peddlers of hope. Come on, not a dope peddler, but a hope peddler. Not a dope peddler, a hope peddler, because nobody is too far gone. It's never too late. It's never too late. God has proven, not just in Bible times, but in modern times, when somebody's passed away, he can raise them from the dead. If it's his plan to take them, then they keep going. You know what I'm saying? God can reverse sickness. God can change bank accounts overnight. It'll come from unexpected places. It, I, I don't have time, we're out of time, but if I had time, there are some stories of the last two years and, and years of ministry when, when you didn't have it and you said, well, that didn't happen today. You know, we sell some, we build repurposed furniture out of old doors and barn board and all that, and you have a sale and, and uh, somebody's going to buy it and then they don't come or they come and say, oh, it's bigger than I thought. And you said, well, we listed the measurements in the ad. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you did, but I just couldn't picture it. Well, save my time and yours. Get a tape measure. It's about five bucks. <laughs> measure your space. <laughs> and you don't do that. Your carnal wants to just shake them. <laughs> Give them a tape measure. Take it home. Check it. <laughs> but it's, oh, no problem. No, we want you happy. Uh, I'm a local pastor, and, and I want this to be something that you'd like me. You're, you're, you're starting to twitch. Like, <laughs> oh, I got some retail people here. Come on. And then it doesn't, that happened within the last week, and the money wasn't there, and the kids are coming home. Somebody came to buy it. They changed their mind. Oh, I think it's too short. Too short? Well, praise the Lord. Why don't I go buy a couple of eight-foot two-by-fours, spike them on the side, Try to get that in your house, dear. <laughs> you know how it is. If you're in sales, you get yanked. Around. If you're a realtor, you've shown 3,000 houses to sell one. You know what I mean? And it was my 69 trailer. So that just bought you gas for the week, this, the profit off that. Listen, the lies of hopelessness say you're alone. You can't hold on. It's all over. Nobody's with you. Listen, Psalm 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. You're one sunrise away. Tell your neighbor, you're one. Just tell your neighbor right now, please help me. You, you know what? You're one sunrise away. And if you're struggling as a couple, you just turn to your wife, your husband, and say, We're one sunrise away. It's going to change. Simple things can change it. The greatest secret is this, and I'm closing. The greatest secret is this. Mm. We need to be hope peddlers in giving out hope and sharing hope because if we can pass the test, anybody ever have a test or a quiz in 
first or second grade or third, didn't they check us for anything? I mean, they didn't just pass us all, fifth grade, whatever. If we couldn't pass the test, we couldn't get promoted to sixth or seventh. I mean, I look at me trying to play high school football if I'd never passed. Now, I'd be, I couldn't do sprints. I saw that field on King Street. I thought, man, I used to run fast down one of those fields. Now I'm a, I was a running back. Now I'm a walking back. <laughs> Now I'm like, a, I'd make like a good assistant assistant to the assistant coach. I don't, I didn't see what happened. You know, I didn't see it. But anyway, you know, you go through those things and you got to pass the test. If we'll choose to run to the strongholds and pass the test, if we'll choose to do that, God is going to do great things because the bricks of your tough experience, the bricks of that tough situation, God is going to use those bricks to build a platform for the next level that he's bringing you to in your individual walk, in your family, in your marriage, your relationship with your kids, your ministry, your church experience. And guess what? I know you're all hope peddlers because I look out here as I drove up Smith Street last night, I saw something that blessed me. A year ago, I was here, there was a dirt hole. There was a dirt hole. I figured a year ago and next month in December, I figured out if I didn't do well that weekend that Pastor Nick, Pastor Glenn would sentence me to stay in that dirt hole until I could preach anyway, learn it, man. And uh, I come up Smith Street. That's an expensive project. Things are tied. You know, we give God all the excuses. Well, I really can't. Oh, yes, we can. I've tried to learn to be a hope peddler. Every bolt that you bought with your giving, every girder and, and the top of the flooring and the concrete's coming this week, possibly. It's scheduled, man. Every dollar you put into that, that's such a beacon of hope. You're going to see this from Smith Street. You're gonna have people drive by and shake their heads and say, wonder what's going on there. Well, maybe there's hope in there. Maybe there are good things. Maybe that's a good church. Maybe God is real. People are given to, to expand because they must want us here. They must want me to bring my friend, my son, my daughter, my cousin, my drug addicted teen, my, my messed up sexually cousin, come on, my friend that's fallen morally time and time again and he doesn't know Jesus yet. They're building up hope. You're making a place of hope on this property. More visible, more space, more opportunity. Let's run to the stronghold, prisoners of hope. Come on, let's stand to your feet. Let's give the Lord some praise for that word. Come on, give the Lord thanks. Thank you, Jesus.